morning, good morning, good morning, guys. Oh my goodness, happy Friday. Oh my goodness, it's Friday. It's Friday. Woo, God's gonna turn it around. Um, happy Friday, guys, happy Friday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm a little bit late hopping on here, but I am here. I am here, I made it. <laughs> so today's devotion is called Between Friday and Saturday. We all know what today is. Good Friday, we're about to celebrate Easter. I'm so excited, I don't know what my hair is doing, but y'all know, y'all are used to this. Anyway, um, but we Easter is, is right here, and last Easter looked so different, guys, and I just cannot keep thinking about and um, how different this Easter is from last Easter, Easter, and how excited I am to be able to leave my house and actually go to the house of the Lord, to go to church for Easter this Sunday. So I really hope that and pray that all of you are also able to go to church this this Sunday and um, and celebrate and magnify the Lord together with with other believers and um. Man, such a wonderful day that's coming up. But right now, between Friday and Sunday, Luke 23, 44 through 46. Let me read this. 23, 44 through 46. All right, it says, It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three, because the sun's light failed. The curtain of the sanctuary was split down the middle, and Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. Saying this, he breathed his last. All right? So here it is. It's dark. Did you know that? Maybe you didn't know that. That it actually got dark from noon, 12 o'clock, the middle of the day. Okay? Darkness came over the whole land until about 3 o'clock. So three hours, complete darkness. Okay? Okay? And it said, because the sun's light failed. It's crazy, ain't it? The curtain of the sanctuary was split down the middle from top to bottom, right? And Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. Saying this, he breathed his last. Was it, right? We know the story. The story of Jesus on the cross, right? So here's the devotion that's in my Bible, the Encouraged Devotional Bible. All right, so the writer here, she says, we can breathe easy on Good Friday because we know Easter Sunday is coming and all will be well, right? We know that. But what about that long ago Saturday when the world was dark and tears kept on coming as they longed to go to the tomb but weren't able as they gathered together in upper rooms, confused and doubting, full of pain and grief spilling over. If you're watching me live, give me a hashtag one. If you're watching the replay, give me a hashtag two. They didn't remember the promise. They couldn't see Sunday was coming. We see it because we know now. But they couldn't, they couldn't see it. But listen, listen. Jesus chose to take on what we beg to take off. He welcomed what we wail over. Also, we could celebrate together. Sunday healed what Friday broke and what Saturday wept over. Sunday redeemed what Friday lost and Saturday couldn't see past. Amen. But they couldn't see Sunday when they were living in Saturday. They couldn't see Sunday when they were living in Saturday. To them, Sunday would be yet another day with a dead Savior. And what kind of Savior is that? We live in Saturday so often, don't we? We do. We live in that Saturday, in that darkness, in that discouragement, in that depression, in that feeling like there's no hope. We get, we get so wrapped up in our circumstances that we're looking around in our lives and, and, our, and things that are going on around us and we feel hopeless at times and we... And, we, and it feels dark, and it feels gloomy, and it feels like, man, what is happening, right? We live in that so often. 
We live in this broken, painful, confusing world. Chaos is all around us and so many things fall apart. We endure sickness, pain, broken hearts, and death. All of it Saturday, right? We can't see Sunday down the road. There's no hope amidst all of our anger and our hurt. But in our waiting, the plan continues. In our waiting, the plan continues. We don't see the shift. We don't realize how much is changing in the heavenlies. <laughs> Praise God. When time stood still and the Messiah breathed one last breath, the book didn't end. It didn't end right there, guys. Your Saturday, that's not the end. What you're going through right now is not the end. The story, the plan is still being unfolded. It is still being worked out. It's not over. It's not over. The book didn't end. The page simply turned. The page simply turned. For them, Good Friday was bad Friday. It was bad. Saturday was bad Saturday. They woke up to a bad Sunday. But then the glorious King, Savior King rose. He conquered the grave and defied death. Hallelujah. He loves you in your Friday of yesterday, in your darkness and pain. He holds you in the confusion and silence of Saturday. And beloved, he is coming for you on Sunday. He is coming for you. Hold on. He will not delay. His timing is perfect. His timing is perfect. Somebody needs to grab a hold of that word right now because you're getting impatient. You're struggling because you're, you're not understanding things. His timing is perfect. Trust God. Trust his plan. Trust that he is working it out. His timing is perfect, right? His promises are true. If you read this good word, and you eat it daily, daily, not just Sundays, not just Wednesdays, not just, you know, something a little bit whenever, but daily when you are eating this word and it is filling your soul, man, you see all of those promises. There's so many, so many promises wrapped up in here. So many good things about who God is and about who we are and what he says about us. Man, so many good things. His promises are true. They're true. He will come through. He will come through. Hang on. Hang in there. Keep trusting. Keep the faith. Eyes on Jesus. Focus on him. Do not lose heart. Do not lose faith. Don't look to the right or to the left. Man, keep your eyes on Jesus. He will come through. Nothing is impossible. Every chain is breakable. Every, every chain is breakable. Every, sing I, oh, I feel that. Every single one, every chain is breakable. Every one. And all of heaven was practicing their counting. Three, two, one. They knew it. They knew it. We sweat it out, right? We sweat it out. Man, we get anxious. We get nervous. We get upset. But man, they know that Sunday is coming. He always comes through. His promises are true. His timing is perfect. Lamentations 3, 21 through 23 says, Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's faithfulness, faithful love, we do not perish, for his mercies never end. His mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. They are new every single morning. Every day we wake up, we should wake up with a thankful heart. 
man, his praise should continually be in our mouths, right? We should continually be giving God praise. Great is your faithfulness. How can we forget God? Help us to not forget him. I am so thankful and so excited about this Easter, guys. I'm telling you, I can't hardly, I just can't stop even thinking about it. I'm excited to be at church. I'm excited to be with family and with friends. I'm excited that I get to be outside, that I'm not watching it on TV or on, on Facebook or whatever, and I'm not knocking those things. I am thankful for those things and that there is a way to still watch, but there is nothing like coming together with the body of Christ. There is nothing like grabbing a sister in Christ, a brother, giving a hug, praising God together, listening to the word together, worshiping together, encouraging each other face to face. There's nothing that takes that place. Nothing. Nothing is better than that. <laughs> we do what we can, and I get that. But man, if you were able, if we can, you can walk outside of your doors, you're not sick, you're healthy in your body, you're, you're able to be with other people, I encourage you to go. Don't let fear keep you down. Don't let fear lock you in your house. Not one more day, not one more second. Stop letting fear control your mind and your body and your actions. Man, let that thing go. Face it. We did 100 days, which took like six months of facing fear, right? Being brave. And it's saying, even though I'm afraid, I'm going to step out anyway. That's what being brave is. Doesn't mean that the fear goes away altogether, but in stepping out in faith, it has to leave. It will go. Once you do that thing and you keep doing, you keep putting that one foot in front of the other, the fear has to leave. You face it, it has to go in Jesus' name, right? It has to. So, man, great is your faithfulness, oh Lord. Man, he, he is faithful today. I want y'all to have such a wonderful weekend. Um, man, find yourself in a good, good God, Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled church this weekend. Praise God. Magnify His name. Come to Him with a thankful heart, with rejoicing and full of joy. Man, He will do all those things for you. Man, just... Must, just get together, get together and do that. And then next week, guys, I will not be here. Um, we have spring break, it's spring break around here. So um, all of next week, I will not be on live, but I will hop back on here the following week, I will be. So y'all have a wonderful spring break, a wonderful week. Man, don't leave God out of it. I'm still going to be reading. I'm still going to be doing my devotion. I just won't be on the live, but I will be reading his word. Don't neglect the reading of God's word. It is food for your soul. Man, if we would feed our spirit as much as we do our physical bodies, we wouldn't have half the problems, 99% probably of the problems that we that we struggle with and we and we go through from day to day because man, that word would be living inside of us and it would just be feeding us and strengthening us and making us strong and mighty in God. And when that enemy comes against us, we know how to use the sword of the spirit, right? He strengthens our faith that makes it soar to the height and then we can use this sword to fight against the enemy because we have that word living down inside of us. So when he wants to whisper lies to us and he wants to speak to us, we know the word of God to stand on. We know how to answer back. We know how to stand upon the word and not listen to the enemy, to know when he's speaking to us and to um, ignore his lies and to know what the truth of God is in us and that our minds are re renewed daily, right? Man, he is so good to us. Dive into the word of God. Let it feed your soul and your spirit and it will come alive and it will get stronger day by day. Just keep doing it. I love you guys. Have a wonderful week and I will see y'all the next Monday, whatever date that is, but that's when it will be. <laughs> y'all have a wonderful week and I'll see y'all then on the MJ Daily. Bye guys.